Millie and Molly like to do everything together. They laugh together. I don't know, because her coach was a pumpkin. <laughs> they played together. Higher, higher. And they always walked home together. <laughs> so, of course, they were doing something together for the class concert. Everyone began practising their parts for the show. Tom was with Humphrey, who had planned a really scary alien robot monster play. <laughs> it's not funny, it's scary! You take the low road. And Miss Blythe was teaching Millie and Molly a song to sing together. Before you. That's it, Molly, you're getting the tune. Don't worry, Millie, with a little more practice, you'll pick it up. I'm just not very good at getting tunes, Miss Blythe. Where me and my true love wherever want to run. Who phone. is that singing? Um, uh, it was Molly, but I asked her to. Don't stop. You've got a good voice, girl. Don't waste it. Uh, um, on yon bonny banks and by yon bonny slopes where the sun shines bright on me. I thought Aunt Moore was going to be really cross. Me too. <laughs> Molly, why don't you sing the song for the concert by yourself? You're really good. But I like doing everything with you. I'll be in the concert too, doing something else. Well... Molly, keep singing. <laughs> But me and my true love will ever want to roam on the bonny, bonny banks of La The next day, the two friends told Miss Blythe that Molly would sing by herself. But only if Millie can be in the concert too. Of course she can. We need a very reliable person to work the curtains, Millie. OK. Now, Molly, would you mind staying after school and I can go over the song with you? But I always go home with Millie. Oh, Millie, you don't mind, do you? Well, I suppose I can go home by myself. Just this once. Millie knew she could walk home by herself, but that didn't mean she had to like it. But by the time the concert was only days away, Millie had to even eat her lunch without Molly. And Millie found the park wasn't nearly so much fun when Molly was too busy practising to come with her. And Humphrey didn't seem too happy either. This robot needs more red paint around his eyes. He's not scary enough. Ah! Please, please, please don't leave me, Mr Monster. <laughs> hey, Tom, stop that. Oh. He's not a funny alien robot monster. Ow. He's a scary alien robot monster. <laughs> but at least Molly's finale was going well. All her hard work was paying off. No, Molly, that was lovely. But I'd like you to stay back again for one more practice. Okay, Miss Blythe. Where's that Molly girl? She's practicing her song for the concert. Again? Good for her. You must be getting used to walking home by yourself. It was the day before the concert, and everyone was ready for the final rehearsal. And curtain open for the finale. <sighs> Goodness, Molly, what's the matter? Uh, my throat's a bit sore. And the concert tomorrow night. Oh, no. Molly, you must rest your voice. I'll call your dad and get him to pick you up straight away. Molly wasn't feeling well at all, but Millie was feeling worse. Hey, watch where you're going. <laughs> oh, it's all right, it's just leaves. That's not what I'm crying about. Molly's lost her voice and she can't sing in the concert and it's all my fault. 
And how on earth is it your fault? Because I wish she wasn't singing. Fiddlesticks. That's ridiculous. Of course you didn't make Molly lose her voice. What she needs is my special cure. What's your special cure? Fresh honey, lemon juice, hot water, garlic and ground ginger. Uh. Well, it's not supposed to be tasty. And most important, you take it last thing at night, then wrap your throat up with a scarf. Maybe I could make it for Molly. When's the concert? Tomorrow night. So, Molly will have to take the cure tonight. You'd better get cracking if you're going to get all these ingredients together. <sighs> I haven't really got enough time. Anyway, it's not my fault she's lost her voice. All of a sudden, Millie realised that if she wasn't busy practising her song, Molly would now have some time to play with her. And here comes Nurse Jemima to look after Dolly in the hospital. There, there, Dolly. You'll feel much better after your big operation. You haven't been talking, have you, Molly? I think it's time for you to have some more rest. Will you still come to the concert tomorrow night, Molly? We could have lots of fun doing the curtains together. Mm. This is the worst thing that's ever happened to me. Thanks for coming to check on Molly. You're a good friend to her, Millie. All the way home, Millie thought about what it meant to be a good friend. And then Millie knew there was something urgent she had to do. There wasn't a moment to lose. You can't just take one or two lemons, you have to take the lot. They're making a mess of my lawn. Now, I've got some garlic in my pantry, but you'll have to get ground ginger from the supermarket and honey from Farmer Hegarty. We've got some honey at home. It can't just be any old honey. It has to be farm fresh honey. But I've never been to Farmer Hegarty's without Molly. Uh, hi, Beefy. <laughs> Lucky Molly's not here with me, cos she's scared of you. <laughs> Soon, Millie had the farm fresh honey, along with the garlic and the lemons. All she still needed was ground ginger from the supermarket. Oh no, I'm too late. It's closed. Got any donuts left? Sold out, but I've got a one last gingerbread man. No thanks. Um, excuse me, do you happen to make your gingerbread men with ground ginger? I sure do. Thanks. Shh. You have to drink it all up, then wrap up your throat with a warm scarf. But they wouldn't know if the cure worked till the following night. Molly! Oh, we're very pleased to see you. Have you got your voice back? Molly! We don't know yet. She's been resting it. Oh, only time will tell. The concert was going very well so far. Tom and Humphrey, you're next. This is a really scary play called Attack of the Really Scary Robot Monster from Outer Space. They're supposed to run away from me. Pardon, Mr. Monster? Tom? Oh, no! The monster's got a mouthful of Humphrey. <laughs> you shouldn't talk with your mouthful, Mr. Monster. <laughs> Just then, Humphrey realised it was fun to be scary, but it was even more fun to be funny. Guess what, kid? What is it? <laughs> watching from out front. Molly didn't know what was going to happen when she tried to sing. Molly, what's wrong? Oh, dear. Oh, dear. <laughs> 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 
by yon bonny banks and by yon bonny slopes where the sun shines bright on Loch Lomond, where me and my true love forever want to roam on the bonny bonny banks of Loch Lomond. You take the low road and I'll take the high road and I'll be in Scotland before you. For me and my true love will never meet again on the bonny bonny. Of Loch Lomond. There was no one happier than Molly that night, except maybe Millie. She saw how happy Molly was, so she was happy. She wanted the best for her friend, because that's what best friends do. Millie and Molly were busy planning and preparing for a very special occasion. They'd been looking forward to it for months. Here are the birthday candles. Wow! Yellow stripey birthday candles. What kind of birthday cake will you have, Millie? Well, it has to be yellow and stripey. Yellow and stripey were Millie and Molly's special thing. A stripey tiger! Millie, does this give you any ideas? Yes, yes, yes! A yellow tiger cake! With black licorice stripes? Yay, Mum! Yes! Do you want to make some patty cakes? Can't have a birthday party without patty cakes. Stripey patty cakes. <laughs> and we'll play pin the tail on the donkey. Pin the tail on the zebra. Zebra! Oh, yes! <laughs> the zebra's a stripey! So who are you going to invite to your birthday party? You? <laughs> of course! And Poppy, and Sophie, and Tom, and Jack, because he's Tom's best friend, and Harry, and Alf. What about George? Because he plays with Harry. Yes, and Chloe, because she sits next to Poppy. And Elizabeth. Oh, and Humphrey. I can't leave him out, because he sometimes plays with Tom. Millie? That's the whole class. Oh, yes. Oh, no. What's wrong? How can I possibly get everything ready for such a big party? It's OK, Millie. I'll be helping you. It's going to be the best party ever. Molly was happy to help Millie with everything. Thank you. Pretty invitations. Molly helped me make them. I've never been invited to a birthday party before. And you can dress up in stripes if you like, cos Millie's party has a stripey theme. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Millie, is Meg invited? The whole class is invited. Yay! Wow, I wonder what's oh, going on. Imagine the cake. What for eight? As the day of the party drew closer, Molly put together the perfect stripey outfit. <laughs> While other party guests went shopping for the perfect stripey present. What about this one? Great! I like stripey pigs. Let's buy two. I like the zebra puppet. Me too. Ah, it wants to eat your fingers. <laughs> Everyone was counting down. Only 77 more hours till Millie's party. Woohoo! Stripey socks! Shh. She'll be here any minute. You don't want her to hear. <laughs> there was only one person who wasn't feeling excited about Millie's birthday party. And that was Millie. Mum, I'm dizzy. And spotty. Spotty? It's chicken pox and it's contagious. So how long will Millie have to stay away from school? A few days. What's contagious? Oh, darling, other children can catch chicken pox from you. I'm afraid this means... I know. No party. I'm so sorry, darling. Mum, you'll catch it from me. Your dad and I have already had chicken pox, so we won't catch them again. The whole class was disappointed too. So no stripey party? Mm -mm. <laughs> this was going to be the first 
birthday party I ever went to. Now I won't get to eat yellow stripy tiger cake. Poor Millie. After all her plans, she'll be so upset. Oh. Feeling itchy today? A bit, but my head stopped aching. Oh, she's already recovering. But you're not your happy self, are you, Millie? Millie's missing her friends, aren't you, darling? Mm -hmm. Especially Molly. Of course you are. But you need to stay home until next week. Molly was on her way to Millie's to drop off all the Get Well Soon cards the class had made. Dr Smiley, how's Millie? She's definitely on the mend. And how are you, Molly? It's not fair that she can't have her birthday party. She and I had it all worked out. No wonder Millie's so sad. The whole class is sad. I've got a cure for that. You have? Millie can still have her birthday party. But she's got the chicken pox. As long as she doesn't get too close to her guests. You can run the party for her, Molly, seeing as you helped her plan it. Really? But that night, Molly's mood had changed. And I told Millie she could always count on me, but how can I get such a big party ready all by myself? Well, maybe you don't have to do it all by yourself. Maybe you've got friends you can count on. I could speak to the class tomorrow. See who'll help me. That's a terrific idea, Molly. And we can make it a surprise party for Millie. Better call Millie's mum and dad. Uh, so it's not a surprise party for them, too. <laughs> Everyone wanted to help Molly organise the surprise <laughs> birthday party for Millie. Me, 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 me. Now, it's tomorrow, so you have to work hard. And it's not a stripey party anymore. The day of the birthday came very quickly. Happy birthday, birthday Millie. Millie. I wish this was a happy birthday. But it's the saddest birthday of my whole life. But what Millie didn't know was that everyone was busily preparing for her surprise birthday party for later that afternoon. Molly and Poppy were making the birthday cake. We'll make it a leopard cake instead of a tiger. Elizabeth was making yellow icing. And Meg and Tom were icing patty cakes. Alf was whipping cream. And even Humphrey was helping out too by licking the mixing spoons. When they were all finished with, of course. And Harry was making a pin the tail on the giraffe game. But there was still a lot to do. Meanwhile, George and Sophie were changing their stripy presents for ones that fitted the new party theme. Soon everyone raced home to get changed for the birthday party while Molly and Poppy finished off the birthday cake. Tomcat! <coughs> Party's starting soon. We'll just have to call all the guests. Tell them the party's off. I'd better ring Millie's mum and dad first. What's Millie's number? Five, five, four... Wait! Look, pieces are stuck together with icing. But it's still all smashed up. But we can stick more pieces together and turn it into some other kind of creature. Unaware of Molly's problems, everyone else had gathered to surprise Millie. <laughs> this is boring. When's the party? I'm hungry. We have to wait till Molly and Poppy get here with the cake. They should be here by now. So let's start the party without them. But the surprise party was all Molly's idea. Here they come! Shh! Ah. 
Why don't you come outside and get some fresh air? Sorry, Dad, but I just want to stay here on the couch. What if she won't come out? Look, Millie, you'll never get better stuck inside. Come on. to be Millie's happiest birthday ever. She could always count on her good friends, especially Molly. <laughs> Millie and Molly liked visiting Alf and his Nan at the caravan that was their home. Oh, your turn, Molly. Alf's Nan taught them games from the country she used to live in. And there was always something delicious for afternoon tea. You win, Molly. Pack up horseshoe game now. We have the afternoon tea. What's for afternoon tea? Is it those little pancakes? The ones with wild blackberry jam? You and Nan make? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Where did you get all these horseshoes out? My nun made them. In the old country, I look after the horses. My lovely nan rode horses, made their horseshoes, and cured them when they were sick. You must know everything about horses, Alf's nan. I know I love the horses. Can you get the last horseshoe, Millie? Sure. Puddles! <laughs> the next day, Puddles got up to a different kind of mischief out at Farmer Hegarty's farm. <laughs> What on earth? Oh, who's this then? Where did you come from? Goodness, Pepper. Got the sniffles, have you, my girl? As for you, Mr. Dog, better take you to the police station. See if we can find your owner. After school, Millie and Molly were going back to Elf's caravan to play horseshoes again. to report Puddles as a lost dog to the policeman. He was way out at my place. Wow, your farm's miles out of town. By the way, Elf, why is he called Puddles? He is a stray dog and... <laughs> it's all right. I think I know now. When Millie, Molly and Alf reached Nan's caravan, huh? they were in for a nasty surprise. What are you doing? Caravan Park is sold. Sold? <gasps> they build lots of houses here. We must go. Go? Away? When? Tomorrow. Oh! I do not tell you, Alf. I hope to find way to stay, but no. 
so we must go. Where are we going? We take caravan to another town. <gasps> oh, no! Another town! <laughs> Millie and Molly decided they had to find somewhere for Alf and Nan's caravan in their town so they wouldn't have to move away. I'm sorry, Millie, but we can't fit a caravan into our yard. It's just not big enough for two families. So we're really sad that Alf has to move away Typical. And... Friends always let you down. That's why I don't get too attached. Now, a bunch of crisp carrots or a big firm cabbage never lets you down. But Aunt Maud, what about your friend Biddy Bid? You'd be sad if she had to move away. Fiddlesticks! Well, maybe. So would there be room in your beautiful big garden for one tiny little caravan? Of course not. I need every single inch of my garden for fruit, vegetables and flowers. How else can I stay the best gardener in the whole town? Tie your end of the clothesline, Ty. I will. I don't know why we didn't think of the path before, Millie. I just can't wait to tell Alf and Nan they don't have to leave town. Millie, Molly, what's all this? Isn't it great? Now Nan and Alf won't have to move away. They can park their caravan right here. But they can't. I'm sorry, but it's against the law. Against the law? Private caravans can only be used in special parks or on large areas of private land, not public parks like this. But there isn't any land like that in our town. No, I know. Nan's already been to see me, and we couldn't find anywhere. Sorry, girls. The following day, Millie and Molly came to say goodbye to Alf and Nan. Hi, Alf. What you got there? Old horseshoes. Good luck charms from Nan and me. Thanks, Alf. You girls, good friends to my Alf. I just wish we could have found a way for you to stay. Better hit the road soon, Nan. Got to come back and get me own caravan. All right, you two monsters. I brought you a couple of juicy apples. <coughs> huh? <coughs> apple. <gasps> Pepper! What's wrong? My poor Pepper. You feel hot and your nose is running. I think you've got a fever. I'll go and get the vet, Pepper. I'll be as quick as I can. Girls, but could you hurry? Pepper's sick. Vet's out on another emergency. Got to get back to the poor old girl. Poor Pepper! We know someone who can look after a sick horse. <laughs> she has sickness in chest. The cold night was closing in by the time Nan reached Pepper's side. What can we do? Make her warm. Too cold. She get more sick. Right. Millie, Molly, Alf, I need your help. We need to build a windbreak. Find some blankets and build a fire. There'll be the makings in the barn. This'll keep you warm, Pepper. Phew! That stinks! What is it? Medicine for horse. Vinegar, herbs. Millie, Molly, are you going to be all right riding your bikes home in the dark? But we can't go now. We'll just worry about Pepper all night. <sighs> How about I ring home for you both? See if you can camp the night in the barn. Nan and Elf can stay with you. OK, thanks, Farmer Hegarty. Elf can, but not me. I stay with Pepper. I will, too. I'll be right by your side, girl. <coughs> Look! Salt's looking after Pepper, too. Pepper really trusts you, Nan. She beautiful horse. Beautiful horse. Beautiful horse. Do you think... Do you think she'll make it through the night, Nan? I don't know. She very sick horse. <gasps> <coughs> I'm worried too, boy. Alf? 
Millie, Molly, sleep time. Go now. Poor Peppa. Will she be all right? If anyone can make her better, my lovely Nan can. But it's such a cold night. And Nan said if Peppa got too cold, she would get sicker. Welcome to visit Pepper and Salt any time you like. You can teach Elf the horse ride now. No, we go away today. Where? Why are you? The caravan park was sold. Nan and Elf have to move a long way away. Oh, unless Farmer Higgity. Unless what, Millie? <laughs> Farmer Higgity had plenty of room for Elf and Nan's caravan. And even though he lived so far out of town, Alf was going to learn to ride Peppa to school. Hey! This means we're going to see Peppa every day at school! Yay! And other people were helping to make sure that Alf and his Nan would be very comfortable in their new home. There's a new home for Puddles too. Uh, by the way, why is he called Puddles? <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> I think I can guess. The policeman helped with the clothesline, and Aunt Maud and Biddy Bid planted a vegetable garden just for Nan and Alf. Biddy Bid, don't plant the basil over there. It's got to go here by the tomatoes. Keeps the caterpillars away. Fiddle and fiddle. <laughs> and everyone enjoyed an afternoon tea of Alf and Nan's speciality. Um, thank you. Oh, 